Hey, welcome to lecture or whiteboard series 2.0. Uh, neurophysiology, we're going to be discussing the cells of the nervous system. And this is sort of on the back of the first lecture, which was the, the divisions of the nervous system. So now we're going to uh, look at some of the specific cells and sort of their function uh, and role within each part of the nervous system. And so we can start this by saying, uh, so we have the nervous system here and we can uh, we can break this into uh, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, okay? And we can then further subdivide the central nervous system into two more categories, okay? Uh, we'll talk about the first one here, which is the neuron, okay? and What is a neuron? So a neuron is basically a signal transmitting cell, okay? Uh, you're gonna find this in the central nervous system. Uh, it's gonna be relays. It's gonna be initiating signals, okay? It's also gonna be relaying signals. Um, and let's just sort of take a look at like what a, a generic um, neuron might look like. Okay, so we have this generic neuron, and this here is going to be what we call the soma. So this is uh, soma, meaning cell body. Uh, within that, you're going to have a nucleus. Okay, you're going to have these projections around the cell body, and these are what you call dendrites. And these dendrites are these these projections are. Um, going to be having uh, synapses with other uh, other neurons, okay? So the cell body will be able to receive information coming into it and then uh, be able to propagate that or relay that signal because we're a signal, uh, we're a signal relaying uh, cell, right? Then uh, we have we have some other things around the, the cell body that uh, that we can talk about. We have an area of the cytoplasm that surrounds a nucleus. Okay, that's uh, that's called the paracarion. Okay, the paracarion has some enzymes in that area that. Um, particularly, what it's uh, one of the functions is important to to remember to know is um, that it's responsible for synthesizing some neurotransmitters, okay? We'll talk more about what neurotransmitters are, but these are basically the signal. So if we're a signal, we have cells that are relaying signals or propagating signals, uh, we have to have an actual signal, right? And uh, neurotransmitters are, are used in the body to, uh, to communicate. Then we have, uh, we have these, other organelles that are sort of surrounding this uh, the cell body and the nucleus. One of them that I think is kind of key to point out is that uh, we have some some that are around here that we call rough endoplasmic reticulum or free ribosomes. Okay, um, these these particularly. Uh, we call uh, nasal bodies. And they're they're all over around here in the cell in the cell body. So they're scattered. Um, I think some of them also collect more sort of around the periphery as well. And um, what happens is that we have a particular kind of stain called the the nasal stain. And uh, when you when you're when you're staining a piece of neural tissue from the central nervous system, you use a nasal stain, and that would highlight these uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum and free ribosomes within the cell body, and um, that is an important uh, histology uh, fact right there. Then uh, then we have an area of the of the neuron that 
uh, is right here, sort of at the, the beginning of the, what we call the axon. So this is, this axon is a long projection, okay? And this is gonna be, um, this is gonna be sending information from the cell body and relaying it in this direction, okay? And we will talk more in the next video about, um, uh, so about like action potentials and so forth. So we will get much more involved in the actual signals that are being relayed. But for this, for this lecture, we just, sort of doing the basic structure, okay? And this area right here, which is sort of the beginning point, okay, of the axon or between the cell body and the axon is called the axon hillock, okay? And this is important because this is sort of the beginning point where you can send a, um, a, a transmission. So you can start to send a signal, an electrical signal, right, down the axon and propagate it down to the, what we call the axon terminal, okay? And this is where we have uh, some, maybe it could be, um, could be another, like a dendrite of another cell, right? So it could be one of these, right? So it could be sending communication from, one neuron to another neuron uh, and or this could also be maybe um, a muscle so a motor end plate of a muscle and we need to communicate with it or another organ right so some sort of effector and uh, this axon terminal is this location here and then we have something that we'll discuss in more detail which uh, is within this area here, and this is called a synapse, okay? That will be in that later uh, later discussion. But um, for, the, for the axon, HELOC is the point where you would start the signal. And then we have within the axon, um, it is, um, it is, it's basically a, a membrane, okay, that has, uh, that has these channels and we will be propagating um, like the passage of chemicals, sodium and potassium to generate a wave of current that will be going down uh, this axon, okay? And around this axon, we, we have um, this thing called uh, myelination, Okay, and you're referring to a uh, myelinated axon, okay? We have these specific kind of cells and we'll talk more about them coming up, uh, but we, I'm just doing the anatomy portion of it right now. You have these points within each one of these segments, okay? And these, these points here are what we call uh, well, they're nodes, and they're the nodes of Ranvier, okay, R-A-N-V-I-E-R, -E Ranvier, okay. Um, then within each one of these segments, this is referred to as the internode, okay. Um, you have axons that are uh, myelinated and unmyelinated. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll talk here a little bit more about what the myelination is, but um, it's, it's basically going to determine um, uh, how fast the propagation of the signal is going to be. And we can also say that, uh, that uh, a neuron has this axonal process, right? But we can also say that um, the the axon has the ability to branch, okay? And if you have, um, uh, it has the ability to branch, then it has the ability to sort of propagate uh, or divide or um, uh, have multiple divisions within a single signal. And this would be called a collateral branch. Okay, and we'll see examples of that as we, we move forward with uh, with these uh, with 
with neurophysiology. Um, I do want to make a quick uh, mention of a couple different kind of cells that you can find, or I would say really just proteins. So let's do a green color here, okay? You have here that um, you have something like called cytoplasmic or axonal transport, okay? So just to let you know, a, uh, a cell body generally has a negative charge within it at any given time. The axonal terminal, so this end over here, generally has a uh, positive charge, okay? And you have these little motor proteins, okay? And uh, what their job is basically gonna be to transport materials. And they will uh, transport them by actually sort of like walking, right? Like um, across, like literally like walking with their little foot processes across the axon, okay? And if we're gonna say that if we're moving towards the axon terminal, right? So if that's this direction here, that's in a positive direction, we're gonna say that that is anterograde, okay? But then if we're going from, uh, if we're gonna be walking from a um, positive to negative, going back towards the cell body, we're gonna say that that's retrograde, okay? And the, the cells that are going and moving in an anterograde or negative to positive or away from the cell body, uh, these are what we call kinesins, okay? And then uh, just cause it's kind of busy here, the retrograde, um, motor protein that we, we say is moving from positive uh, to negative or towards the cell body, uh, we call these D-Y-N-E-I-N, dynines, okay? So dynines move retrograde back towards the cell body, towards the negative side, and then anterograde kinesins, and they work positive um, towards the axon terminal. Okay, so that's sort of like the, the basic uh, anatomy and structure of a, of like a generic neuron. So let's get rid of this. Yeah, get rid of some more of this. And next let's, uh, next, let's talk a little bit about, um, well, I guess before we move on to the next cell, so we'll put this back, CNS, okay. Uh, we talked about the neuron as a signaling trend, uh, as a signaling molecule, right? Or sorry, cell. Uh, but we also want to say too that if the if the neuron in the central nervous system gets damaged, okay, um, it it does not have the ability to um, regenerate itself, okay. Uh, that's that's because that's because once you're in adulthood, okay, you're uh, you have these let's do this sort of generic neuron again, right? Uh, so. Typically, when cells divide, they have um, these these things called centrioles that are inside of the cell body, and they're responsible for helping the cells to divide. Okay, um, but a an adult neuron, okay, does not have the centrioles, so there's no centrioles. And um, if you have no centrioles, then you don't have the ability to, to divide, okay? Um, so with that no division, then if you if you damage the, the neuron, then you know it doesn't have the ability to divide and regenerate itself. Um, what can happen though, and we'll, we'll talk about um, uh, coming up here, is that um, you do have, uh, you do have the ability to sort of uh, regenerate so uh, or 
or form new processes, right? So if your if your um, cell body is intact, okay, uh, but you have a damage in your uh, axonal process, then uh, what will end up happening is this distal portion will sort of like die off and get necrotic and die. Uh, then what can happen though is that uh, you can have you can sort of reform a new. Um, uh, so after this is like pretty much died off, then uh, you can uh, reform that new, re sort of regrow that new um, exon, okay? And um, that's a, more of an axonal regeneration, but that is not the neuronal cell body itself. So once that's, once that's dead and gone, it's, it's pretty much gone for good. Just wanted to bring that up. We'll talk a little bit more about the axonal generation, regeneration coming up as well. But the other thing that uh, we can point out here is that uh, within the um, uh, within the central nervous system, okay, we can um, we can have a couple, well, a very sort of like common type of of neuron, and actually we can find within the peripheral nervous system we can find some common type neurons as well. Uh, so neurons are not just specific to the central nervous system. They can, uh, you also find a neuron in the peripheral nervous system. And we can say that uh, one of the most common, the most common types of neurons, okay, that we find in the central nervous system are what we call multipolar, right? And multipolar neuron is pretty much going to be this um, uh, cell body axon, right? Um, so say this is the terminal axon where your synapses, then you have multiple dendrites coming into a cell body. This is your cell body, okay? So. This is a multipolar neuron, okay? It has multiple uh, multiple dendrites and branches of dendrites, okay? Um, all your motor neurons that control like skeletal muscles are, are multipolar. Uh, and then you would also just say that this is just the most common type of neuron that you can find in the central nervous system. Okay. But if you were to say that you were in the peripheral nervous system, okay, but a slightly different uh, looking nerve, okay. And here we have sort of the same dendrite process. So we'll draw a couple of these. So here are your dendrites. But what will end up happening is these dendrites uh, will feed directly into an axon, okay? And the axon will be continuous, okay? With um, sort of this, uh, let's just draw like the other one, the axon terminal, right? So you have a continuous axon from the actual projecting from the dendrite all the way to the axon terminal. And then what you'll find is somewhere within uh, these two areas here, the two ends, you will find a uh, side projection, okay? And you will find the cell body off to the side, okay? And it has sort of like the stalk here, okay? So uh, when we say something is, has a stalk and it's off uh, like a lateral projection off to the side, it's, we would say that this is like pedunculated Okay, so it has this sort of pedunculated uh, cell body with a, with, a, with a side stalk. So the neuronal cell body is off to the side rather than sort of in this classic end over here with, in the multipolar. So this we will say that we'll find in the peripheral nervous system, and this is what we call a unipolar, okay? And we'll talk about coming up about a very common place that you'll find a unipolar um, uh, unipolar neuron, and one of those are going to be in the, uh, the posterior root 
ganglion, okay? And so basically when you have a, a spinal cord, okay, all right, uh, brain, central nervous system up here. All right, so if you were to do a transection of that, okay, and then we were to look at that transection of the spinal cord, uh, in the posterior or then our back, the dorsal side, and then our, our anterior side here, uh, this sort of a generic transection of the spinal cord is what it would, what it would look like, okay? A central canal, uh, it's gray, fire, gray matter, white matter up along around the sides here. Uh, you have sensory information, okay? But it's gonna be coming in through the, uh, what we call these posterior roots, okay? And so sensory information is coming in through uh, through the body and then up into the central nervous system, right, to get processed. Um, and then you'll it'll go back and elicit a motor response and it'll come back and down through the spinal cord. Um, but this these posterior roots, okay, that are connected to what we call the, the, the dorsal or the posterior gray horn, right? Um, these posterior roots, and they project off of the back of the spinal cord. They have a swelling, okay? And on that swelling, this is where we have the cell body, okay, of a, of a unipolar, um, of a unipolar neuron. So this is a cell body and it branches off and then the length of the axon is actually running through the posterior root and the spinal nerve. Okay, so that's very common in the peripheral nervous system and the uh, the dendrites and the axon are continuous with each other. Okay, while the, while the cell body's off to the side and you'll find these again uh, with uh, sensory sensory. The other one, um, there's something called a uh, bipolar. And this is kind of like, a, this is kind of like where you have, uh, I think about a uni, a unipolar one, right? Um, so you have your dendrites here and these are projecting and then your axon, right? And then instead of being a uh, continuous your end of your dendrites connecting or the axon all the way continuous to the axonal um, terminal, then what happens is, and is you have your cell body, which is continuous with the actual axon itself. And this then projects out to the uh, axon terminal. So it's sort of a placement of the uh, cell body, whether or not you have a continuous axon from one end to the other, or it's sort of interrupted in, with the cell body um, uh, breaking up between the two, okay? And um, these are, um, so these are pretty much like special, special senses. So you'll find these with your, within your special senses that we discussed before. <laughs> Okay, next let's talk about um, let's talk about some other type cells. Okay, so let's go back to our blue. And so we did the central nervous system. Uh, we did the let's see if we can get rid of that. So we did the yeah, sorry. Yeah, let's get that out of my, something's in my way here. You might not be able to see that what I'm doing on the screen, but something's popping up on me. Uh, neurons, and then we have these other type cells. Okay, so we have neurons by themselves, but then we have uh, some more like supporting type cells. Okay, and these are what we call neuroglial cells. And you can say they're just glial cells, okay? Um, one of the types of 
uh, glial cells is we have uh, ependymal, okay? An ependymal cell, we will uh, we'll talk more in depth about these, uh, but these are going to be uh, producing what we call CSF, uh, so the cerebral spinal fluid. And I think uh, it's gonna be a few lectures ahead we'll talk about, um, first we'll talk about what meningeal layers are and we'll sort of show how the brain and then the spinal cord is, um, is sort of covered in these layers, okay? Uh, the tissue and have these spaces within and then we'll we'll locate like the the spaces around the brain and the spinal uh, spinal cord which which is going to where you'll find the CSF fluid okay uh, it's called the subarachnoid space and we'll we'll show within the brain uh, we'll show these sort of like um, network of ventricles openings okay within the brain then down into the brain through the brain stem and uh, then continuous with the spinal cord, how this this CSF fluid is produced and then how it's how it's moved through this ventricular system, okay? And then how it um, sort of clears out of there and then is recycled. Uh, but we see, but um, the CSF fluid is gonna be sort of housing, for now we'll just say it's housing and uh, the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord, uh, and it's providing like um, like a shock barrier, helping to keep, rather than just sort of having your brain spinal cord bouncing around within its, its spaces, you fill it with a fluid, right? Uh, very vicious fluid, um, high viscosity to it, right? Um, it has the ability to absorb shock and um, and being in that suspension. So ependymal cells, okay, these are also called the uh, the choroid plexus that you'll find in the ventricles. So that's where they're producing the CSF fluid. Um, they are, uh, so they are, I actually said it a little bit longer here. Uh, so these are simple, columnar, okay, and they are ciliated. So these are ciliated, simple columnar cells, okay? They're lining the ventricles within the brain, and they're producing the CSF fluid uh, to be able to, um, like we said, shock absorption, and then uh, has other functions that we'll discuss later. Um, Next, we have something called a microglia, okay, microglia. Okay, microglia is basically the um, macrophage, we'll just say um, macrophage of the CNS, okay. And a macrophage is basically is part of your one of your immune cells. Okay, uh, what it'll do is it'll go around and it'll do something called phagocytosis. Uh, and what that what that is is basically this is your immune cells. So whenever you have like a foreign invader inside your body, um, or you have particulates or debris that need to be cleaned up, then a macrophage is one of those cells that'll go around and eat it up. And to eat is to phagocytize, phagocytize okay? Um, so phagocytosis is gonna be your microglia uh, that you'll specifically find within uh, uh, central nervous system. Then we have something called an astrocyte. And an astrocyte is like a, a structural structural support for the neurons. But then what they also do is they maintain what's called the blood brain barrier. And I don't wanna to go too much into depth about the blood brain barrier, but um, it's extremely important. And basically if you have a, a capillary here, uh, you we, we wanna be able to maintain the integrity, okay? Of, um, of of our central nervous system and sort of like the 
uh, keeping it clean, right? So we don't want all these toxins. We don't want byproducts of biochemical processes happening inside our body. We don't want drugs that we're taking to cross over uh, into our central nervous system, right? So we have uh, we have this sort of barrier, okay, that is that is maintained between our 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 blood, okay, and then within our central nervous system, and we have these. We have these cells, okay, that they they sort of hang out around capillaries and so forth, and they they help to create this uh, this barrier, okay, They're kind of closed off. There's a basement membrane. Uh, there's uh, there's these different tight junctions and so forth. These foot processes from these astrocyte cells that all sort of maintain this blood brain barrier, okay. Uh, so that's a very important job for them. And um, um, astrocytes, you'll find them in the central nervous system. Then you have uh, something called an oligodendrocyte, okay? And an oligodendrocyte is basically a, site, a cell that you'll find that um, myelinates um axons in the central nervous system okay and these things have um well we'll show you here so we have that axon right cell body here and right right um you have these let's see there's another one here right another axon up here so you have these cells okay that what they will do in the central nervous system is they will they will have projections, okay, that sort of feed off from the cell body and they project down, okay, and what they are responsible to do is to uh, myelinate. Remember, so we have these nodes, these myelin, myelination, right? These segments, okay? Uh, you have these projections, processes coming from the oligodendrocyte, and they are myelinating the axons, okay? Um, that, is their, that is their role. And then we can say under like microscopy, so if you were to take a prepare a tissue sample of the central nervous system, right? Uh, and then we would say that the um, the oligodendrocytes are identifiable because they have this um, this sort of fried egg appearance. Okay, so you know, a fried egg, right? So oligodendrocytes have a fried egg appearance. They synthesize myelin and they sort of form this myelin sheath around axons, okay? So these are the, the big glial cells that you will find in the central nervous system and very all very important to know. Next, we can move on to peripheral nervous system. Uh, and the peripheral nervous system here, we have um, really just two cells, okay, we're gonna talk about. So we're gonna talk about a Schwann cell, okay? And we're gonna talk about a satellite. And this with two L's, I believe. And so, all right. Um, so we have a Schwann cell, so first, Schwann, shell, Schwann cells, okay, are also called um, um, neurolemo, I think one or two M's, neurolemocytes. And the neurolemocytes are um, are in reference to what is a limo. Well, if we go back to 
uh, this this idea of our sort of generic neuron, right, with an axon as a axonal um, terminal here. Then we have the segments, right, these myelinated segments, right. So if we were to transect right through one of these segments within the internode, right, uh, what we would end up with here would be, let's see if I can draw it, okay. Um, we would end up with is this um, uh, this axon here, okay? And so the area within here is the axon, okay? Then this sort of outer rim here around the axon, we would call the axon, axolema, axolema, okay? And then, um, then we can go on and then further say that the myelin around it, okay, looks like this. Okay, so this is the other portion of the segment, right? So this is sort of surrounding it, okay? And then this is what we would reference as the uh, myelin sheath, okay? the uh, sheath that surrounds the myelin, okay? And then referencing like this outer sheath, okay? Um, that's out here. Um, we would then call this the neurolemma, okay? So this is the neurolemma, all right? So it's, it's an anatomical, uh, an anatomical portion of this, um, of this, what we call Schwann cell. Okay, this is a Schwann cell that is circulating an axon. Okay, and if you look at it, it sort of has like this um, sort of like onion layers, right? So it's layered around this. Okay, um, we can find um, within the cell there's going to actually be a, a a nucleus. Okay, so it's a living cell, right? So there will be a nucleus to the Schwann cell, and essentially, um, essentially, a, a, a Schwann cell is going to be um, functioning as like myelinating peripheral nerves. So we'll just say uh, myelinating peripheral nerves, and I say peripheral nerves. So um, you know that's referencing our dis our previous discussion. So we should. Uh, we should know what I mean when I say that by now. Um, and they're also conducting some uh, some other functions like uh, like repair. Okay, so if you have um, if you have damage to a peripheral nerve here, so to this. Uh, all right, so we have this generic neuron with the cell body here. Um, then the axon further projects and then has a, uh, um, so we'll go ahead and say, we'll go ahead and draw it here, right? So the axon terminal. Uh, and if you, if you damage an axon, Okay, in the peripheral nerve of a nerve, right? Um, we said that we cannot regenerate the neuron itself, right? Um, but what will end up happening is once you get damage, uh, there's there's a reaction that takes place. It's uh, it's, it's called chromatolysis. Uh, okay. And some things, some things are happening in chromatolysis that uh, it's basically a reaction. Okay, we're not going to go into the individual steps of it. And what will one of the things that will kick off is you'll get something called degeneration, and we call it axonal degeneration. We call it a uh, Wallerian Wallerian degeneration degeneration, okay? And well, where Valerian degeneration is, is that 
uh, just um, just distal to the site of the um, of the injury, what will end up happening is you will uh, you will get degeneration of that piece, and then um, and then in reality, um, once that that's happened, you know this this remaining proximal piece of uh, of that neuron will sort of recoil. Okay, so it'll go back this direction. All right, so it'll recoil. And so what'll end up happening is it'll look, uh, it'll be smaller and then um, sort of smaller and smaller and smaller. And uh, and it'll, it'll sort of retract back to the cell body, okay? And then after, after a while, um, you'll start to get these Schwann cells that will come back in and uh, start to, to help to remyelinate and uh, reform this, um, this axon back to uh, what it was. So it'll reform a new axon. So you can have axonal regeneration, okay? Um, but not neuronal regeneration. And we would just say that uh, just to just sort of keep your terminology that Wallerian degeneration is what is happening distal to the site of the uh, of the injury. Okay, so just make sure that uh, you you understand that uh, the degeneration is not happening here. It's more of a more of a recoil. Okay, more of a recoil, but this is not injured, and then it'll it'll start to bring in other cells to to regenerate itself, okay? Um, so that's your Schwann cell. And let's, let's get rid of all this. Okay. Next, let's talk about the satellite. And the satellite cells are uh, so they're very they're very similar to um, the astrocytes. Okay, so these are basically your astrocytes, but of the peripheral nervous system. And one of their big one of their big functions are going to be uh, so if you were to look at this sort of generic neuron, right? Um, what you'll see is that you'll see these uh, satellite cells that have projections down onto uh, the body or the soma of a neuron, okay? What's in the peripheral nervous system, keep that straight. Um, so we're in the peripheral nervous system. And then what these will, what these will sort of do is um, they'll sort of just help to maintain the environment, okay? Uh, around the um, around the cell body of the neuron. Okay, so they're more like environmental support, environmental project, uh, protection. The astrocytes actually do that as well. So they sort of help to maintain the environment uh, around the around the cell body of a neuron. Um, uh, we just didn't really talk much about that. It's, and then you know, there's there's sort of this process too, I think, you know, just make a quick mention of it. Um, if, you know, when you have something called um, uh, hypoxia, which is basically like low oxygen, okay? So if you have low oxygen and um, your brain is, is very highly active and it uses a lot of oxygen and it needs a lot of nutrients in general. But um, if you have like a lack of oxygen going to your brain for, uh, about five minutes. So if you have, if you're hypoxic for about five minutes, then you can pretty much get um, ear, irreversible uh, damage. Okay. So oxygen, uh, so no oxygen, no oxygen for we'll say five minutes. That, that can be irreversible damage. Okay. And there's sort of a um, 
not going to go into, uh, you know, into much depth, but pretty much within like the first one to three days, um, you're going to be having this, this sort of reaction going on in your brain, your, in your nervous system. And what's going to happen is you're going to get like uh, an immune response um, and with pretty much something called necrosis. So you're going to get uh, necrosis of the material of, of the tissue. Okay. And then I would say probably within about um, later part of the, the three days, then maybe from like three to five days. Okay. So sort of in a later part of that first week. Um, and then certainly, uh, certainly I would say within like, um, we'll say like one to two weeks. So we're in days here, we're in days here. Um, so we'll say like the first week is this point right here, okay? So let's say you're, you're starting to get an immune response to damage and you're getting some necrotic tissue there. Uh, the immune response is gonna be, um, one of the things is that you're gonna start to see those micro, glia okay and we talked about the microglia right so these are like the macrophages of the central nervous system so they're all responding there to to come and clean up right um then you know sort of within one to two weeks um you can you can start to see some other uh some other type cells so um you know you'll you'll basically these will be like regenerating um like your blood vessels, you get uh, what we call vascular proliferation. Um, then there's just this, this term that we call reactive gliosis. Okay. And reactive gliosis is something that I'm not going to, you know, this is, I'm not going to go into full depth on this, but uh, I will give you a little understanding of this what reactive gliosis is and um, gliosis meaning uh, glial cells, right? So you're getting an upregulation of these type cells, these supporting cells. Uh, if it can get, you know, you know, I guess too much of it, you know, weeks, weeks down the road. So, you know, we just keep going more than two weeks, right? Um, we can, we can develop a scar. Okay. So we can get scar tissue in our brain. It's more of a pathological thing, not a neurophysiology thing, but I do, it will bring up one, one point that I would like to sort of point out with all this, okay? Um, and that is, that's, let's see, let's talk about, second, let me get my notes up here. Right. So one thing I just want to show up. So we talked about that reactive gliosis and uh, this is sort of a, an immune response, part of your immune response to damage. And you have like your neuro epithelium. Okay. And once you get this, uh, once you get this like damage, right. It's this damage, this injury to the neuroepithelium, all right? It'll kick out these progenitor cells. And we've talked before about progenitor cells. Uh, so these are like earlier stem cells. And these are what we call glioblasts, okay? These glio, glioblasts. And... What the glioblast will do then is they will um, they will further divide and specialize, right? And we will get the oligodendrocytes or oligodendroblast, uh, and then you know oligodendro, then astro astroblast. So we'll say that these are blasts here then these will further specialize into the 
oligodendrocytes. And then the astrocytes. Right, so now we have um, sites, right? So these are sort of the fully differentiated cells uh, that we just discussed. And so we have, uh, we have injury, we have progenitor cells that are then becoming uh, specialized cells, uh, mature specialized cells within the central nervous system. And these are gonna be like your astrocytes we talked about, um, you know, upregulating cells to sort of maintain that blood brain barrier, right? Also to sort of support the environment around it, around the neuron. Okay. So we have those functions we discussed. Then the oligodendrocytes is this is the, uh, the myelin, right? So the myelin. Um, so recreating uh, or synthesizing myelin to uh, sort of go back in and, you know, perform malarian degenerate or uh, perform um, regeneration of axons and form new synapses with other neurons around it, right? Um, and sort of meanwhile, all this is happening, you have those uh, microglia, right? So we have the microglia, which are your macrophages, and they're there uh, sort of cleaning things up, right? So this is sort of a, an orchestrated event, okay, uh, within the supporting cells, okay? And uh, I just wanted to, to sort of point that out. And the other thing too, um, you know, I wanna just sort of make a quick mention of another kind of cell that you will find in the central nervous system. You go to the cerebellum, okay? you will find within the cerebellum, um, you have uh, this cortical region and uh, we'll discuss more about what the cortical region is uh, in the upcoming videos. But within the cortical region here, you will have these things called uh, or, or Kinji cells. Okay, and I just want to make a quick note, these, these, these Purkinje cells, okay, so these are inhibitory. Uh, and they are, um, so these are like releasing a neurotransmitter, an inhibitory neurotransmitter that we call GABA. So I want to just make a quick note of that. I don't want to really discuss it more. Uh, I just want to sort of prep your brains on this because we will uh, we'll talk more about like what the uh, what gray matter is and sort of the cortex areas. And uh, I think you first uh, should just at least hear what they are and sort of where you find them at. Um, but the majority of what uh, what was important, what I wanted to discuss was um, was covered. Uh, so far, I think maybe one other topic. Let me differentiate between a couple of things. Um, well, let's see. So the the difference of let's talk about one last concept here, okay? And what I want to say is that um, when we're looking at the anatomy of a neuron, of a neuron right? Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this too up here. Let's get the whole board clean. Um, when we're looking at the anatomy of a neuron. We can then uh, we can further subdivide this, okay, or define this neuron as um, as a cell, okay, a specialized a specialized cell, right, that, that relays information and signals, and that it has um, it has a collection of white matter that we find outside of the central nervous system. Um, let's say, then that would be called uh, a uh, nerve okay 
And then if we have a, a neuron, which has an axon, which is a collection of white matter, and we find it inside the central nervous system, okay, uh, then we will we will specifically call that the the neuron, okay. Um, so I want to just make a distinction that you actually have um, you actually have two types of neurons, okay, um, or ner or nerves we would say, and that I would just say that if you're in the peripheral nervous system we call that uh we call that you know cell body with an axon and a synapsis right that general neuron that we we looked at we call that a nerve if we're in the peripheral nervous system okay um and then i would say that if you're in the central nervous system okay you have that general cell body an axon synapsis right um that is what we're going to call a neuron, right? It just sort of depends on where you're at in a central nervous system or peripheral nervous system. You're in the peripheral nervous system. I use the nerve uh, terminology, okay? And if you're in a peripheral nerve, okay, um, we can then look at a, uh, some additional anatomy and let's just say that we have this big uh, like fascicle, okay? Um, and let's first do a little bit of uh, a little bit of terminology, okay? We have epi, we have peri, and we have endo. And this is similar terminology that you would find when you're looking at like what a muscle fascicle is. Okay, so we use some seminal, si similar terminology, right? Uh, the, the epi basically means outer and your endo means inner and peri means around, okay? Um, this, this, this here we would say is like the nerve trunk, okay? So this would be projecting from uh, your spinal cord, right? Yeah, so this would be um, going on back to the spinal cord here, and then connecting to the spinal cord in the central nervous system, right? So this is projecting from the body, right? And you have the trunk of the nerve. Okay, and the trunk of the nerve, uh, we will say the trunk of the nerve has this outer surface here, okay? Outer surface, we call epi. So this is the epineurium. Okay. Next, uh, next within, within, okay, we have individual bundles, okay? And sort of, let's, let's take one of these then and let's project it out, okay? Now, within each, within the epineurium, okay, we have a, um, we have a space here, okay? And the space is um, basically gonna be called the perineurium, okay? So this is the space surrounding each one of these individual bundles here, okay? That's all the space and the space in between, okay? And we can say also that we have um, sort of continuous within the perineurium, we have these uh, blood vessels, okay? So within the perineurium, it, is, uh, it has blood vessels. So it is vascular within the perineurium, okay? And the perineurium is around. Okay, 
then uh, so then we have this final uh, this final endonurium. Let's give another uh, what color do we, we can do it? Okay. So we have this endonurium, which means inner. Okay, and the endonurium okay is going to be sort of within. within this this um, this bundle here okay um, should probably use the same color let's let's go back let's take one step back here okay so let's say this green here right so this orange so we'll say that this perineurium okay this is the perineurium as well right so the perineurium, surrounds this bundle right then what we have within these bundles is we have individual fibers nerve fibers okay all right individual nerve fibers and sort of surrounding that uh these individual nerve fibers within here right we have this um, endonurium. Okay, so hope that makes sense. So we have, uh, so we have endonurium within surrounding these nerve fibers. Then surrounding that endonurium, we have uh, we have perineurium. Okay, that's all this green. And then within, which is continuous with uh, the perineurium, we have uh, blood vessels. So it is vascular. And then surrounding all of that, we have the epineurium. And I would say that the epineurium is going to be made up of more of a dense connective tissue, uh, while the perineurium and endoneurium is going to be uh, more of a uh, loose connective tissue, as uh, some uh, elastic fibers and collagen, basically. Okay. Um, sort of a, a key um, little side note here is that uh, whenever you have a, um, uh, a Guillain-Barre syndrome, okay, so if you have this infection, then this is going to be uh, affecting the endoneurium, okay, and you'll sort of get that um, uh well, we're not going to go into the Guillain-Barre syndrome, but it's basically a, a peripheral nerval, nervous condition, right? And infection. It'll be uh, it'll be affecting your endoneurium, and you'll sort of get loss of your peripheral nerves uh, more more down to the per further periphery. So it starts at your your feet, and it moves up your uh, up your legs, up towards your trunk, and um, so that's actually where you get the Guillain-Barre syndrome that is an infection within the endonarium. And this is sort of like the, the, basic, uh, the basic anatomy of what we would say is a, uh, a nerve, or we can also call this a uh, peripheral, meaning peripheral, meaning outside of, the, outside of the central nervous system. So a peripheral nerve. Okay, um, and yeah, so that'll uh, that will pretty much conclude this lecture uh, for the uh, 2.0 neurophysiology uh, cells of the nervous system. Thank you.